So another very simple concept for the sermon topic this evening, and what I'm going to be focusing on, we're going to be looking at quite a few scriptures involving receiving forgiveness from God by confessing and forsaking your sins, which really is repentance, or at least one form of repentance. And this is, you know, I, I get a little irritated sometimes when I hear people say, oh, you don't believe in repentance. You don't, you know, you guys don't believe in repentance. We absolutely do here believe in repentance. And, but we just, we believe in biblical repentance and in the right context, what it's talking about. So before I even get into the main subject matter, this, this just has to be dealt with because what we believe here, when it comes to repentance and salvation, the salvation of your soul, the forgiveness of your sins eternally. See, when it comes to, the, when the Bible talks about forgiveness, there's two types of forgiveness. There's an eternal forgiveness and a temporal forgiveness. The eternal forgiveness is what you receive when you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you turn from your unbelief, when you turn from your belief in idols, when you turn from whatever faith that you had prior to putting all of your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, that repentance is required in order for you to be saved and to receive the forgiveness of sins that's only applied through the blood of Jesus Christ that saves your soul eternally. You are forever saved, a child of God, born again, once saved, always saved. That lasts forever. However, there's also another type of forgiveness that we ought to be looking for from God. Because once you're born again, you have been born into a family. You have been born into God's family, spiritually speaking, where you are a child and God is your father. Hey, you're in that family forever. It's eternal life. You, can ne you don't have to worry about losing that or being kicked out of the family as much as my own children don't have to worry about no longer being my daughters or being my sons because that's a permanent thing that happens once they're born. However, just as much as they don't have to worry about no longer being my child, we don't have to worry about not being God's child because we're born in his family. We do have to worry about the chastisement, the correction, the chastening, the punishments that God will give us in this lifetime. It's not hell. We're not worried about hell. Hell is removed from the equation. Jesus Christ paid for all of that. But what we do want to look for forgiveness from is that we still do sin. We still do things that are wrong. We still do things that can make God angry with us. That's going to cause God to, yes, bring down punishment upon his children. And we need to seek that level of forgiveness from God. That God will forgive us when we do things that we're not supposed to do as his children. And that we could ask God for mercy and compassion and long suffering with us when we do those things that are wrong. But in order for, uh, for us to receive that type of forgiveness, it's not just automatic. We need to go to God with a humble heart, a broken heart, a repentant heart, one that says, God, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that again. I realized I was wrong. I was stupid. I was foolish. You get down on your face. You grieve. You sorrow. You mourn. And ask God to forgive you. Because there's these two references of forgiveness in Scripture, that's why so many people get confused and why people have this, you have to turn from all of your sins for your soul to be saved type of a teaching. Because you can turn, and we're going to look at a lot of these passages tonight that deal with that type of repentance of just being broken down, sorry, confessing, forsaking, having nothing to do with that anymore. In order to receive forgiveness, the problem is that this isn't the eternal forgiveness that we're seeking for. That, and that's the, this is works. When you are confessing your sin and forsaking that sin and saying, God, I'm not going to do that anymore. What you're saying is, God, I'm going to obey you. God, I'm not going to disobey you. I'm sorry I disobeyed you. I'm sorry I broke your law. Now I'm going to turn from doing that and I'm going to follow you. And I'm going to do what you told me to do. Those are works. But see, that's what you need to do if you want that temporal forgiveness, the one that's that immediate in this lifetime of 
God not chastening you, or at least not disciplining you as much as maybe he would if you had a really bad attitude about it. 